Welcome to our channel. Don't forget to subscribe and put likes, because your support is important for us. And here we go. Amidst escalating tensions and ongoing conflict in the Gaza Strip, the United States has recently authorized a significant shipment of bombs and military planes to Israel. The Washington Post revealed that this decision comes amidst concerns over potential Israeli military actions in Rafah, located in southern Gaza. This move adds to the already substantial U.S. aid package to Israel, which amounts to $3.8 billion annually. The United States has long been a key supporter of Israel, providing substantial financial assistance primarily for military purposes. Under a Memorandum of Understanding MOU, between the two countries, this aid aims to ensure Israel's military edge in the region. The assistance, predominantly in the form of foreign military financing FMF, enables Israel to acquire advanced military equipment and technology from the U.S., with a portion allocated for missile defense systems. The latest wave of military aid, detailed by Pentagon and State Department officials, includes 1,800 negative 84 Malawian Quaches bombs weighing 2,000 pounds each, along with 500 negative 82 Malawian Quaches bombs weighing 500 pounds each. Additionally, the package comprises 25 state of the art F 35 fighter jets, part of a broader agreement sanctioned by Congress in 2008. Israel's request for an additional squadron of F 35s, aiming to expand its fleet to 75 aircraft, signifies a significant boost in its aerial combat capabilities. However, the delivery of these jets is expected to span several years, with only 36 out of the planned 50 F 35s delivered to date. Despite this robust military assistance program, the U.S. has faced criticism from various groups within the country, urging the Biden administration to leverage aid to influence Israeli policies. However, the White House has reiterated its support for Israel's right to self-defense and dismissed the idea of conditioning aid. This stance was reinforced when Israel assured compliance with a new national security memorandum, including commitments regarding the use of American weaponry and humanitarian assistance in Gaza. While ongoing assessments of Israel's adherence to international humanitarian law have not found violations in the conduct of war or the provision of humanitarian aid, the State Department is tasked with reporting to Congress on Israel's compliance by May 8. Meanwhile, the U.S. abstained from a United Nations Security Council vote calling for a ceasefire in Gaza and the release of hostages, prompting criticism from Israel and leading to the postponement of strategic discussions between the two nations. General Charles Q. O'Brown Jr., the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, emphasized that not all of Israel's military requests have been fulfilled, citing U.S. military readiness and capacity limitations. This cautious approach highlights the complex considerations involved in providing military aid to allies. As Israel plans a significant ground operation in Rafah, concerns persist over the flow of humanitarian aid into Gaza and the escalating civilian casualties. The United States continues to express growing concern over the humanitarian situation in the region amidst the ongoing conflict. That's all for now. See you later.